Kendra, because Zach just said that, I'm mostly going to be talking to you tonight. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll just send him out of the room. Or I'll just cut out. Pause. Yeah, I'll cut out everything he said. Hello and welcome to WNC Original Music, episode 122, the oldest man to ever live episode. Very happy to have on this week's episode the Brown Mountain Lightning Bugs. They are Zach and Kendra Harding. They are uh, ostensibly a folk group from Western North Carolina, but uh, they delve into other genres as well, which is uh, no more apparent than on their most recent album, Folk-ish. And that's not my natural stammer, that's how it's written. They still have a lot of uh, traditional folk influences in this new album, but you're going to hear uh, some new flavors there as well. You can find Kendra and Zach at brownmountainlightningbugs.com. And of course, we'll have links to their music and their social media in the show notes, so make sure to check that out. They do a lot of cool stuff on social media too. You'll see clips of their live performances and a lot of extras there as well. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Brown Mountain Lightning Bugs. Have two dogs, um, and one of them already had her own feature song on our first album, which was Joni Girl, which Zach wrote before I ever even had my dog. And uh, one morning I woke up and I saw one of the dogs. We have a border collie and a or border collie mix and a lab mix. And I woke up and the border collie mix is there, and she's got this like white kind of collar. And she looks kind of like the Joker. She's kind of got this, like, psychotic look. Um, and 
So she was standing there in the, like, early morning light in the shadow, looking at me, waiting for me to get up to, to give her breakfast. And so I got that first line, um, Joker's at my bedside. And then a couple weeks later, Zach was noodling around on the banjo. And uh, so I pulled that line out of my brain. And then from there it was, what if I just wrote a whole song about both of our dogs. And so the the verses are about each, a mix of each dog, and then the choruses are about both of them together. <laughs> but there's no, like, direct dog reference. It's all, all sort of somewhat veiled in there. Yes. Mm-hmm. It was meant to sound very uh, cryptic and swampy. But it really, did. it's... I it's thought it was about a, politics. That's how that's how cryptic it was. Yeah. <laughs> it maybe it was. If yeah. that's what it meant to you, right. don't let me dictate what it means. But yeah, that was that was my intention in writing the lyrics for Alabaster. And so a lot of times when we co write, um, it's either one of us has uh, has lyrics and a melody and and needs some help on the chord progression or vice versa. And often Zach will have some some kind of lick or a chord progression or something going um and then we'll sit down and uh either write the lyrics together or or i'll i'll take on the bulk of the lyric work while he takes on the bulk of the the music side so i don't know how you came up with that riff uh so uh if you've ever heard of a slap bass you know that's like the kind of funky sound that guys do with their thumb and finger Mm -hmm. on bass a lot of funk stuff I do that on banjo, and the, the the main part on the banjo is that is a slap banjo part. So it's like kind of adapting a technique that you normally associate with electric bass onto banjo, mm-hmm. which that was sort of the the synthesis of the music aspect of it. I like the um, this song. The feel of it had uh, I forgot. I meant to look this up, and I and I forgot. But um, there's a band they do like um, uh, what would you call it? Like Celtic music. But it's like hard rock and Celtic. Do you know mm-hmm. what I'm talking about? Um, well, there's a couple like that. Like Dead Kennedys kind of have that vibe. Yeah. Uh, Dead Kennedys. There's another one, too. I almost, it almost came to me just then. Flogging Molly. Uh, that kind of sounds familiar. What's the one from Boston? Uh, the Pogues? Maybe. I, there's a, I know no, what you're talking about. There's a few yeah. bands that have that vibe. It's yeah. like uh, there's, there's a famous movie, like a mob movie from, Bo- from Boston. Uh, mm-hmm. I think The Departed. Where's yep, like the theme? Yeah. The theme for that, mm-hmm. yeah. And that yeah. that gave me that because it was kind of like it had that it had that like Americana kind of ban, you know banjo riff, but then the, right. the staccato uh, mm-hmm. kind of heavier parts in there. It was pretty cool. Like that. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, that's definitely we we want to kind of hit both of those things. We want the Americana and more traditional sound, but also throw in drums and electric guitar and stuff to kind of uh, bring a little bit of outside influence into it. So yeah, that's it. Three bodies on the ground She was just a stranger Who saw enough to die The other two were lovers In a town where secrets lie In a town where secrets lie
There's a uh, triple murder that happened in the town that I'm from in 1963. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Western North Carolina. Okay, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but not everybody knows Hendersonville, but anyway, in, in Hendersonville in the this 60s... This goes out a, to the world, so you have to... That's Hendersonville, North Carolina, United States. So it's right, true. right, right, right. And uh, so there was a triple murder that involved two fairly prominent businessmen in town, in, in the town of Hendersonville, and then a, a third uh, person that seemed to just be a bystander um, who just was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And to this day, you know, we're over a half a century later, it's never solved, and there's a lot of, like, uh, there's a lot of uh, ideas that it involves some pretty higher-up people in town that kind of wanted to hush some people up and things like that. And so uh, I thought that was I, – we didn't have a murder ballad, and I think every folk band needs a murder ballad. So Blood in the Appalachia is our murder ballad to kind of uh, – to, to hit that topic. Because, yeah, it has a murder ballad feel, but it's slightly more up-tempo than a typical murder murder ballad. I can't talk. Uh, murder ballad. Let me start that. Yeah, it has a slightly trouble. faster temper. Tem- oh, God. You know what I'm trying <laughs> to say. Answer that question that you know I'm trying to ask. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, I think a lot of, like, Kendra often starts with lyrics when she's writing songs, or at least a lyrical idea and a melody and kind of goes from there. I often start with music. And so, uh, with my banjo playing specifically, uh, I don't I don't want people to think of me as the bluegrass guy, because that's not really what I do. I like mm-hmm. banjo that fits a lot of other styles. And so, that has this pretty, pretty aggressive... Uh, fast banjo part but it's not really bluegrass and so um i wanted it to kind of have this forward pr- propulsion in it and i because of the kind of unsolved aspect of that murder i wanted it to be sort of like a little frantic and kind of you didn't you know you don't know exactly where it's going so uh to be real real slow with it i think was a little bit too uh i don't know kind of reflective and i didn't want this to be reflective i wanted this to be something that still you know progressed into the to, into a modern mystery and I mm-hmm. so I just think the the, the speed kind of helped with that and and also the aspects of the song like there's a bunch of weird stuff that with that murder like uh, they there's a line about a cruciform of crutches being left on the murder scene and that was real so the the one of the people that was murdered was on crutches at the time and over top of the bodies that were just laying there in the woods somebody had built a cross out of the guy's crutches and laid it over top of the body and it's like some really weird stuff. Yeah. And so uh, I guess the kind of like f- fast, aggressive uh, sound just suited that the weirdness of all that. Yeah. Do you hope uh, secretly or not so secretly that someone does like a Netflix special on this and then they can use your song as the Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be great. But yeah. I'm nervous every time when we play that within, say, 100 miles of Hendersonville, uh-huh. I'm nervous that somebody's going to be in the audience that still knows about it, yeah. and they're going to, like, meet me out back. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, so. yeah. I mean, you're asking for it. I, yeah. Don't worry about you. <laughs>
Keeping with the the darker Appalachian themes, uh, I am a I'm a fan of of ghost stories and and some of the the dark and sad histories of things. Um, in fact, I did a a trio of ghost story guitar pieces a few years ago, um, and I think I think Appalachian ghosts and and and, and things are better than than anywhere else. No offense to New England and all those people. Um, but the, the idea for this one was to, to write about somebody who was, uh, kind of being haunted mm. and, uh, but somebody in the, the long distant past. So a couple years ago, we were playing a show with our friend Ryan Packett, who played with us for a while and he and Zach were, were goofing off with some riffs and on St. Patrick's on Day. St. Patrick's yeah. Day. So it had kind of a little bit of a Celtic vibe as well. And a couple weeks later, we were getting together to, to jam and do a little bit of rehearsing. And Zach was like, well, why don't we write something with that that riff the two of us were goofing off with? And so I I started with um, with the, the lines. Uh, well, I actually started in the verse and then worked my way back. So the first line I wrote for this was... Um, I was young, but you were younger. That was something I had thought of, again, years before I actually wrote this whole song, but it was just kind of floating around in my head. And I was like, well, what if this is about somebody who was like an older sibling or an older sister of a child who unfortunately drowned in a river and she's haunted by his ghost? And so it's kind of this story of her all these years later reflecting on this and kind of being haunted either maybe literally, maybe yeah. metaphorically, um, and, uh, and trying to kind of work her way through that, basically. And we shot a video for this one that we're hoping to release at some point. Um, and I, uh, I learned that if you're shooting in or near a body of water... You should do it in the summer and not in November. <laughs> that is the coldest I think I've ever been. <laughs> but hopefully, hopefully we got the shots we needed and it looks good. Were you um, in the water? Did I was know? at oh. one point, very briefly. Yeah. And uh, 
<laughs> there's some there's some good uh, behind the scenes footage of me <laughs> post being in the water. Yeah, I think the shot the the the, the last shot's gonna look real good, but then the, like if you were to see just two seconds past that last <laughs> shot, uh-huh. it would be her going. I was, uh, you know. I was, well, when, when we shot it, I was like, just shoot me from behind. You don't want to see what my face is doing as I'm wading out into this ice cold water. Um, <laughs> now we're ruining the last shot. Hopefully the video will be out before this comes out, but, um, It'll but be yeah. good, good making of story for the, yeah, for the yeah. DVD was, extras. Those special features, man. Yeah. That's one thing they... That we were listening to something where they were talking about how now they don't really have special features because everything is streaming. It's like, yeah, hmm. yeah. we don't yeah. have those as much. More from the Brown Mountain Lightning Bugs in just a few moments. I want to remind you, you can find them at brownmountainlightningbugs.com. For people who are not from Western North Carolina, uh, Brown Mountain Lightning is uh, kind of a, a sort of a semi- paranormal phenomena that happens around here uh similar similar to the northern lights in alaska but just a little scarier make sure to download or stream the brown mountain lightning bugs most recent album folk ish wherever you get your albums and of course as always we will have links in the show notes don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wnc original music wherever you get your podcasts Probably where you're listening right now would be a good place to start. Also, follow us on Instagram and Facebook for lots of extras, videos from the show, pictures, you know, other links to the show if you want to listen again, but on a different platform. That's always cool. You're listening to Western North Carolina. We met at an open mic night in Hendersonville at the Ugly Mug in 2014. I was living in Asheville doing my senior internship for college, and Zach ran that open mic. And so I was just kind of doing the circuit up there and going to all the different open mics and happened upon that one. And we talked and we we hit it off. He crashed a a date that I was on, Uh, not the first time I came, but the second time. I came. <laughs> uh, unknowingly, I was completely unaware of that. But. Yeah. But, yeah, so that's how we met. And then uh, we started swapping gigs between I, – I moved back here to Winston-Salem, and he was still up in the Mills River area. And he would he would toss me a gig from wherever up there, and I'd, you know, return the favor and get him a gig down here. And, and so we started doing that, and it just kind of – kind of grew from there. Minutes to solve as the clock on the wall reminds me And we'll pretend we don't ever have to leave this bed And I'll spend forever in your arms Lose track of time in your eyes Give you the chance to break my heart I'd stop the sun if I could It would do any good to give
your hands forward and we'll pretend that you're on your way back home again. folk side which is going to be more me uh so zach uh his stepmom is from the philippines and he had gone to the philippines with her for a couple months to go visit their family over there and uh i was i was bummed and so i dropped him off at the Asheville airport and was driving back to work at like five o'clock in the morning and as one does i stopped at mcdonald's to get a crappy cup of coffee and I sat in the parking lot while I drank my coffee and, and wrote the lyrics for this because I was I was bummed. This is when we were just we just started dating mm. not long before that. And uh I was I was sad that I wasn't gonna <laughs> see this dude I started dating for a couple months, you know. Um and so that's where this one came from. That's pretty much it. Yeah, musically it's kind of interesting because we tried to record that one a handful of times before we settled on the version that's on the album. And most of our stuff, when you add extra musicians in, whether it's a bass player or a keyboard or drums or whatever, it usually enhances it. And that one, we kept trying to go that route and it wasn't working, so we stripped it back and stripped it back. And that's the, the most spare track on the album musically because it's just the two of us with a harmonica, I think, is the only thing extra. Yeah. And that song just happened to work the best being stripped back compared to you know any other song on the album. So so you write this song for this guy. Uh, I mean, you you pretty much barely know. You, you know, you dated him a little while. So do you like call him up and say, hey, I just wrote a song for you? Or is it later that he learns about this? I I waited. So he he was there for I think like a a month or 6 weeks or so. And his birthday happened in the time period from when he left to when he was going to get back. And so I I sent it to him as his his birthday present. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, that's cool. Cuz yeah. I'm cheap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything, but uh. <laughs> I wrote you a song. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote you a play. <laughs> no, I wrote that you. is very sweet. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, so that I and it turns out he had written one for me in that same span of time. Which it's is, on the album. Which is also on the album. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Let me see if I can guess it. I was hoping to find one wildly inappropriate, <laughs> something like uh, "Devil Girl" or something, but it wasn't. Yeah. Nothing up here. All right. Go ahead. And, uh, is it uh, my best guess is 100 Miles Gone? 
It's not that one. It's Sweet Island Mama. Uh, oh, I would not have guessed that one. But yeah. That's the next one. So Sweet Island Mama. <laughs> So, 
Uh, the, I love. I have a little story that I tell about the uh, about Sweet Alamama Mama whenever we uh, play it out live, and that is that I wrote that for her because I was missing her, and I wrote the island theme musically and lyrically because I was in the Philippines at the time. I was living right on the edge of the ocean, but uh, I was staying with my stepmom's family, who they had like everybody come into town when she comes in, and so it was like all of her family, nieces, nephews, cousins, and everything all coming into this house that she has. And so there's like 30 or 40 people living in this one house that's about the same size as an average American house, and probably 20 of those were little kids. And a lot of them didn't speak English too well, but they they learned this song. They started singing this song that I had written, and I would walk around in town to different streets and go to different markets and stuff, and I would hear little kids singing this song. And so like I have this idea that whether... If I never make it in the United States as a musician, there's a little town in the Philippines that I'm like a big shot in, you know? <laughs> so, anyway, hopefully they're still singing that song over there. But, yeah, yeah I wrote that one, Missing uh, m- missing This Lady Right Here. So. If you wait, like, uh, 20 years, there will be a couple of generations, and, like, your your um, your legend will have grown. So right. there might be statues to you when you go back. I mean, you'll have mythic proportions. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, it's just going to grow. So who yeah. knows? <laughs> I think the thing, I, and I like that one, and I thought I I did think it was very sweet of him to to do that. Um, the song though that he wrote for me that really m- means the most is one I don't know that we'll ever record or release because it's mm. too special, mm-hmm. uh, and it's the song that he wrote to propose to me. Mm-hmm. So he 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 went all in, and we went up, we climbed up to uh, the top of Big Glassy Overlook in Flat Rock, and that's where he proposed with this song. Um, and true to my, if you haven't picked up yet, we're both real awkward. Um, and like true to my nature, <laughs> true to my nature, he was sitting there, you know, noodling around on guitar and I'm having a snack and then he starts singing and I'm still snacking, not really paying attention to what he's doing. Right. And then I, I catch on long about verse three Toward the end, and I'm still got, I'm eating crackers, so I've got a mouthful of cracker, and I'm trying to like wash it down real fast. But I'm like, oh crap, he's proposing. <laughs> so I was surprised by that one. I like that. Those guys were so much fun to talk to. Again, that is Kendra and Zach Harding, also known as the Brown Mountain Lightning Bugs. Find them at brownmountainlightningbugs.com. Should have a couple more episodes coming up with them. Uh, Also, make sure to go and uh, check out their social media for videos and information on upcoming shows. They're doing a lot of shows uh, lately, including they did one just like a half a mile from me uh, the other day. I didn't even know about it until it was over. Uh, That was really my mistake for thinking that uh, they couldn't travel more than 20 miles from where they live. Thanks to Becca and Cody from Admiral Radio for doing the little jingle announcement in the middle for the podcast. Uh, You can find them at AdmiralRadioMusic.com. They are just great guys also. One more time, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, wherever you get your podcast, wherever you're listening to it right now, or any other place would be great. I don't have a preference. Make sure to go out and support your local musicians wherever you live, uh, even if it's not in Western North Carolina. There are good musicians everywhere, I've heard. Speaking of which, the closing song this week comes from Waking April, Uh, who are from almost my hometown, Raleigh, North Carolina. Much like the Brown Mountain Lightning Bugs, Waking April is also a husband and wife duo made up of Bethany and Alex McKee. Search for Waking April on all the streaming sites. Here is their song, Stuck on Silver Linings. Have a good week.
feeling so lonely when you're next to me. Baby, it's so hard to be feeling so lonely, so lonely. I've been looking up. Oh man, well screw Jack Nicholson then. <laughs> 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 <laughs>